Good morning, guys. I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, this week, we're going to talk a little bit about scatter plots. Um, and then uh, how do we interpret scatter plots? Now, we've looked at scatter plots already before. Um, what we're going to start talking about a little bit more is the algebra behind it and how we connect those. Um, and uh, remember, scatter plot is where there's just a series of dots um, on the X and Y axis. Uh, now, these are going to be those real life application type things. Uh, we're going to go through and uh, work with um, some packets, uh, some PDFs that have been put together. The first one that we're going to look at here, we're going to go through pretty much the whole thing together. So if you have a printer, I would go ahead and print this. Um, if not, you're going to want to pull it up on your Teams page, or you're just going to want to kind of look at these things and put it down on paper, um, because these are going to be key as you uh, work through to finish the second part um, of scatter plots for this week. So let's go ahead and pull this up on our doc cam. So if we're looking here, we're going to start uh, with a scatter plot. Uh, and again, the X and the Y axis are here. And there's meaning. So this scatter plot is going to talk about the hours of practice per week versus the number of debates that were won. So this is the debate team from school. And the coaches of a group of debate teams answered a survey about the hours of debate, team practice, and the number of team wins. So when they practice, here are the hours. So one hour a week, two hours a week, three, four, and five. And then each coach, this is how many debates they won. So if you notice, as the hours of the week go up, one, two, three, four, five, the number of debates also go up. So one hour, they only won four. But if we go all the way out here to five hours, they won, looks like 18. So when we look at this, we want to decide if there is a trend. Well, there's two types of trends, positive and negative. Uh, now, they're going to talk about the word correlation. Correlation is just a fancy word for trend. Remember a trend line? So a trend line can be drawn through the middle of this here. Now, and it was basically a linear trend. We want to try and balance dots above and below the line as best we can. All right, so I draw a trend line through it, and I've got some dots above it, and I've got some dots below it. But the line is going upward. That means that it is positive. So when it says the scatter plot indicates which of the following, a positive correlation, a negative correlation, no correlation, or a parallel correlation, um, we're going to go ahead and pick a positive correlation because the line's going up. A negative correlation would mean the line was going downward. No correlation would mean the dots are just scattered everywhere. And a parallel correlation would actually mean you'd have two sets of dots that would create essentially parallel lines. Okay. Now, the other thing you're going to want to be able to do when you look at this is take data from a scatter plot. And that's what number two asks. Based on these results, if a team practices four hours per week next season, which is the best estimate of the number of debates that that team can expect to win? And that's what a scatter plot's going to do. We're going to come up with a trend line, and that's going to approximate things for us. So the key is four hours per week. So we're going to go to four right here, and we're going to go up until we hit that trend line, because that's the approximate or the estimation of what we would have. So at four hours of practice, we hit the line here, and then if we go over to the y-axis, that lines up with 16. So if a team practiced four hours a week, they could anticipate that they would win approximately 16 debates. So when we look here, that's going to give us an answer of B. 16 wins. And again, we're just approximating that, but that's what a scatter plot can do for us. Um, the next scatter plot here kind of got stuck in the middle of the problem. So this does, uh, this was just a kind of a typo here, but um, it basically says Josie and her friends uh, were going to ride their motorcycles. And this graph shows the time that they were riding and the amount of gas that they have left. So if you look here, as the hours go up, 
the amount of gas left goes down, which makes sense. The more you ride your motorcycle or the more you drive a car, the less gas you're going to have. Well, again, if we look at a trend, we could approximate a negative trend. That should be a straight line, by the way. So that's not a very good trend line. But we can say that this is at least a negative trend or a negative correlation. So if we go to the next page here where we're looking at that graph, which of the following best describes the correlation between the gas that remained and the hours that had passed, you would be looking at a negative correlation. Uh, because as we looked at that graph, that graph was going downward. All right, and again, that's because as something increased, as the time increased, the amount of gas decreased. So if something decreases, then you're going to have a negative correlation. Now let's consider number four here. Teresa records the ages and weights of 12 children in her neighborhood. If she records this data in a scatter plot, what type of relationship will she most likely see? Well, let's go ahead and make a graph. Age. Weight. So let's say we've got the kids in the neighborhood and we're going to start at age zero and we're going to go, let's say, age five, 10, 15. And then let's say we have weight of 40, 80, we'll call it 120. So what we have to think about is what's going to happen to children as they get older? Well, let's take a five-year-old. If a five-year-old, and let's just say a five-year-old weighs 40 pounds, what can we anticipate about the 10-year-old? The 10-year-old is probably going to weigh more. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say, okay, maybe the 10-year-old weighs right around there. And what can we assume about the 15-year-old? In all likelihood, the 15-year-old is probably going to weigh more. Now, we don't know this for sure, but over a large sample size, if we looked at a bunch of kids and so we took 12 children, likely the older the child, the more they're going to weigh. Well, what type of trend does this create? If we were to draw a trend line, this line would go upward. And so that's going to be a positive trend. But it's key to sort of create a visual here that you can use. Go back here now. All right, good, good, good. That was not what I wanted to do. All right, so let's take a look here at a couple more. A carpenter recorded the amount of money he earned for different jobs and the amount of time he spent on each job. The data is shown in the scatter plot below. So my first question for you is, what kind of scatter plot correlation is that? Is it positive, negative, or is it scattered all over the place and has no meaning? So the first thing we would recognize is the fact that it is a positive correlation because it goes upward. Now, one of the things that would be helpful is if we were to draw a trend line that would approximate it as best we can. So remember, we want to try and go through as many dots as possible and balance above and below. So let's go ahead and draw a trend line that looks about like that. It actually worked out pretty good. Now, based on the data, which best represents the amount of money the carpenter would earn from a job that took five days? So we're going to look at the time. We're going to look at five right here. And I'm going to go up until I hit my line, and then I'm going to approximate how much that would be. So we did this earlier. So I want you to take a moment, pause the video, and look at this graph and see if you can decide what would be the approximate amount of money the carpenter would earn. All right, now that we're uh, looking at it, let's go back up to the graph. So at five days, we're gonna go until we hit the line and we hit the line right there. And now I'm gonna go over to the left and I see that it hits at about $1,250. So based on this graph, based on this carpenter's earnings and the scatter plot, 
we would say that the carpenter would expect to make about $1,250. And that's really one of the biggest things that you're going to use scatter plots for is to look at some data and then make some predictions from it. According to the graph above, the relationship between the carpenter's earnings and the amount of time he spent on the job is a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation. And we already talked about that one there. We're going to say that it's a positive correlation because the graph goes up. All right, let's look at this here. Number seven. As the age of a car increases, its value decreases. Which scatter plot best represents this relationship? So we're going to look here. The age of the car increases, the value decreases. So let's look at these. Which one of those shows as age goes up, value goes down? Well, this one here is a random no correlation scatter plot. There is no correlation there at all. All right, B shows that as the age of the car gets older, the value goes up. So that's what this scatter plot shows. If, if the scatter plot's positive, it means as age goes up, value goes up. Now this one shows as age goes up, value goes down. And this one shows that as age goes up, the value stays pretty steady. Doesn't really change much. So which one of those shows that as a car gets older, the value decreases? And that's gonna be C because as age goes up, you can see that there is a negative trend or a decrease to the value. Well, let's take a look at a few more here. A trucking company keeps track of the number of miles each of its drivers logs each week. The scatter plot below shows the relationship between a driver's age and the number of miles the driver drove last week. So here's the age, that's a 20 year old driver. Here's a 60 year old driver, a 50 year old driver, and these are all the different drivers. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. there were 12 different drivers. And these were the age and the weekly mileage. So the question is, is there a trend? Is there a positive trend, a negative trend, or no trend at all? So I want you to kind of consider that and let me know what you think. All right. What I would look at with this is that a 20-year-old driver was at 400 600 and over 900. And then we have a 30 year old driver was at looks like about 300 and then way up there at 800. All right. For me, I'm looking at this and I'm saying that there is no real trend. Um, you're gonna say that there's no real correlation between the number of miles that a driver logs and its age, all right, because the points are all over the place. Now, if all of these points here were gone, you might be able to say that there's a negative trend. But then as soon as you bring this in, that sort of messes up that idea because it now sort of drops it down. All right. And now the biggest thing about making a scatter plot yourself um, is creating that scatter plot. So you're gonna talk about the hours of exercise and weight loss. So this is X and Y axis. And what you would need to do is, is you would need to plot those points. So this is going to be zero, and this is going to be one, two, two three, four, and five. And this is going to be hours of exercise. And then we're going to talk about weight loss. So we'll do the same thing here. One, two, three is going to be one, two, three, four. So at 1.3 of exercise, we're going to be sitting right here. They lost a half a pound. So you're going to put a dot right there. Three hours of exercise. 
and we're going to go up to 2.8. So we're going to go up to almost three. Five hours of exercise goes up to 3.5. Two hours of exercise, 2.5. And four hours of exercise is at three. So we just make the X and the Y axis, <coughs> excuse me. And then we're just gonna say that, okay, this is my X and this is my Y. And I create a point for each one of those. Now, if you look at those points, is there some type of correlation? And I would say, yes, I would say that there is a slight positive correlation, um, especially if you look right here, definitely have a positive correlation going. So what type of correlation did you find between the hours of exercise and weight loss? You would say a positive correlation. So this is a lesson you going through sort of examples of scatter plots. We have looked at scatter plots before already, but this is now kind of going through it. That is one whole section of scatter plots. Um, and I would use this video and I would use those ideas um, to help you as we go through the rest of the week. The rest of the week, we're gonna go through the scatter plot packet that has uh, been posted to your Teams page. So this little packet was basically the lesson and then the assignment is going to be the other one that goes with it. Uh, and we will look at a couple of those sections in class tomorrow. It is really, really important that you have all of this down in your scatter plot packet. So if you need to go back and rewatch this lesson so you can write all of those things down, uh, you can definitely do so. Um, both things are posted on your Teams page, so you should be able to get to it and use those. Uh, guys, have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow to go through the second packet. We'll go through a couple of those together in class.